spring means preparation on the homestead. Join us today as we get ready for planting. We're not ready for planting yet. We get a few warm days like today, but there's still snow in the background and we're expecting another eight to 10 inches this week. There's not a lot we can do outside, but there's a lot of things we can do inside to prepare and get ready. So when the warm weather hits, we hit the ground running and we're ready to plant. All right, time to get ready for this year's poultry. We're gonna to try to start out with some turkeys since they were so successful last year. And we're thinking about getting six turkeys if we can find them. And so we've got the brooder inside the garage. And I just put out a whole bunch of bedding. And this is wood chips, wood shavings that I saved from the woodworking projects this year. And so we get free bedding by just saving those. Now, this is not sawdust. This is actual wood shavings. So you can see the difference there. Now, something that I noticed as I was putting the brooder together is that the lid to the brooder was getting some scorch marks. And you can kind of see right here on that uh, board some scorch marks. So I've added this year some pieces of sheet metal to try to reflect more of that heat down so that we don't catch this on fire. The last thing we want to do is burn down the homestead trying to raise turkeys. So hopefully that will help with that situation. Okay, so we picked up our turkeys today. So we're getting them into the brooder. As we showed you earlier, it's all set up. We've got chick starter food. We've also got water. Uh, when you do uh, chicks, you want to start with warm water for the first couple of days to get them uh, heated up because they will lose a lot of heat in transport. Um, because we bought these local rather than through mail order, we don't need uh, to be quite as concerned about uh, warm water, but we do want to do that at least the first time. All right, so we take the chicks, we hold them like this, very gently, then we're going to take their beaks and we're going to put it in the water so they know where to get their water. Uh, they will find the food on their own, but they will have trouble finding the water by themselves. They need chick. And if you have curious cats, they need to be kept away from the chickens. Or turkeys in this case. <laughs> Okay, so we got six turkeys, and if one of those turkeys gets as big as our turkey last year, our Tom did last year, it will cover the cost of buying all six turkeys, if just one of them gets that big. So we're hoping that uh, the turkeys, again, will be uh, positive, net positive this year, and between feed and purchase of the turkeys, if all of them turn out to be female and don't get as big, we're going to struggle, but hopefully <laughs> at least half of them will be males and we should end up net positive with uh, the turkeys. So we will keep you informed on how they do this year. All right, so one of the things that we're going to be doing to get ready for planting this spring is making another grow box. I'm not going to go through the details of this as we already have a video on making a grow box. So we'll put a link uh, up above to point you to that other video.
All right, so grow box is done. Now this is a significantly larger grow box than we did in our previous video. And so we can actually get two lights in this one and hopefully get a lot of seed starts for our garden this year. So we've got our new seeds in our big grow box. We've got some pumpkins and some squash and some Brussels sprouts. We have also moved over into this bigger one some seeds that we started a couple weeks ago. Uh, we've got some tomatoes. These are heirloom tomatoes that we harvested the seeds from our tomatoes last year. And then we've got some peppers that, again, we harvested the seeds from fruit that we got last year. So we're going to put all of these into our big grow box and then we're going to have to get a new another light for our smaller grow box so we can start some more seeds in there. All right, so one of the things that we do to get ready for spring is to get our garden book all um, in order. It's just a basic three ring binder. I think this was left over from one of my kids school years, but I can keep a lot of information in it. I usually have um, I start with a journal, just some lined paper that I can make notes from year to year. I do differentiate what year it is, but they all are kept together. I keep information on snow, like last snow, first snow, when it hailed, how much, you know, which, which weeks were really rainy. So we can use that information the next year to help plan. I also will keep information about how much we bottled or ideas for companion planting or bug control and things like that. Just anything that happened that I want to remember so that I, next year I can take that into consideration. I also have, I keep a lot of maps of our garden um, so that at any point I can pull it out, start planning what we want to plant, uh, making notes as to where things exactly are. And then for each year, I have a tap. Now this was 2020 growing season, so I have here at the very first in the pocket the completed overall um, sum of everything that happened. If I flip over to this year for 2021, which we have not planted yet, I start with my garden plan. And I have here the garden and different ideas of where we can plant things. I'm starting to sort and organize what's going to be where what's going to be planted in companion groupings, what needs to be in hoop houses or with cold frames and things like that. And I can keep notes as to what I want more of, what I don't have enough of in my list or any other information that I want. And then as I actually plant it, I will start a new map with where things actually go because things always change a little during the planting. And then I have our egg trackers for 2021. It says 2020, but that is incorrect. So we keep track of how many eggs we get each day. After the egg tracker, I print out a bunch of these crop pages. So like this, these are peppers that we did from the saved seeds. And I might differentiate between the types of peppers, or I may not, depending on what your needs are. But I wanted to make sure that these we knew that these were from safe seeds that I harvested last year so we could know whether or not I had harvested them correctly and what the turnout was. I put the date where we um, started them as seeds in stores, when they sprouted, when we transplant them outside, I'll put the date they're planted out and which bed, their garden bed they're planted in. I can keep any sorts of notes, um, harvest dates that they are ready, when they start, it, insects, anything. And then as I actually harvest them, I put the date that I harvest and the weight that I harvest. Um, most harvests don't all happen on a single day, so I may have multiple entries as to which dates things were ready. 
and then I can keep track of the weight. So at the end of the season, I can come just add up that weight, and I've got a big total at the bottom. I just print off a bunch of these, and we'll just keep track of everything as we plant them. And it's just a good way of keeping track of what we have. But I have this all ready. I get it ready this time of year so that when it comes time to plant in the garden, that I'm ready to go and I don't forget to write things down because if I don't write it down when I'm doing it, it's not likely to happen. Now I do have sheets for all of this online also and I try to put it all online also, but I like having a notebook that I can take out to the garden, carry around without worrying about, you know, damaging electronics or anything like that. And it just, it works really well to have it in this nice carryable binder. Okay, so this is our garden map that we uh, use. As you can see, I've got each of the garden beds numbered. So that just helps us stay organized. We know which beds have which numbers. So I can make notes such as, we need to compost beds 27. Things like that. And I have here... Um, Things that are permanent, such as our raspberries that come back every year, our asparagus, strawberries, are all written in ink. And then I can come in with a pencil and pencil in where I think that we are going to plant things. And then as they change, I can erase and move around and we'll make a final copy once things are actually planted. This year, um, around the edges, we are going to do a lot of our onions and herbs. And those, we like doing those around the edges just because those tend to help um, keep away critters a little bit, some of the smaller critters. They don't like all the smells of the herbs. They don't like the smell of the onion or the garlic necessarily. So that's what we like to do around the edge, just to hopefully keep some of those out. Over on this side, our long side, this is our southern side, so we do our garlic over there, and we also like to do a row of sunflowers. We have, over here, I was going to try some pumpkins, doing some on the fence trying to do some vertical vertical gardening with those pumpkins. Potatoes in this bed. We've got blueberries over here with turnips in the middle of them. We are going to have pots scattered around. We'll do some pumpkins and some potatoes in pots in some of the extra room. We have beans and peas. We have trellises in these two beds, so we tend to kind of switch the beans and the peas, but keep them in those beds just because they're already permanent trellises there. And We've got some broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. Um, this is one of our cold frames, so we are going to do cukes and peppers and maybe some celery in there. We are also going to be starting some lettuce fairly quickly and some spinach because in the cold frame it should be able to start growing now, those cooler crops. One thing that we wanted to try this year is doing a little kind of a teepee structure on top of the raised bed that the squash can grow up. And then it shades underneath and we'll do some lettuce in the middle of the summer under there where it will be shaded. And hopefully we can get lettuce all the way through the summer when it's shaded and protected from the sun. Now we did find a place that sold some short season corn. This is going to be in a little bit of an experiment. We wanted to try to grow it because corn needs to pollinate. We were going to do it in two different beds and then in the bottoms in between the corn stalks, we were going to try growing some squash or some beans. This is our hoop house that so we're still kind of in the middle of building. But we are going to try to do some tomatoes, some peppers in there where it will hopefully be a little bit warmer and a little bit more protected from the cool weather. I also wanted to try to do some uh, beans like pinto beans, black beans, and just see if we can grow those inside the hoop house in the warmer climate. Now on the back, because this the hoop house is um, hog panels and cattle panels, it's kind of got, you know, fencing inside of it. And so we were going to try to grow some cucumbers vertically and see if we can maximize our space that way. This is our little tomato greenhouse, so we'll definitely pack that as full of tomatoes as we possibly can. This bed we are going to pretty much devote to carrots. We do a lot of carrots, and carrots grow really, really well here. So we were going to try to get two plantings in this. Do a planting in the spring and then harvest it and then have another planting that will go from midsummer to fall. We're not 100% sure that it'll be long enough, but with the cold frame, I think maybe we can extend it on each season enough to get two full crops of carrots. Again, we'll see. That's an experiment. So that's the basic layout of our garden. All right, so spring is a busy time for us. Lots to do. 
Uh, most of the stuff is inside right now just because the weather doesn't want to cooperate all the time. But there's still things that we can do outside when we get a couple of warm days like we just did. Uh, we get out and do what we can. Uh, we spent all day yesterday out in the goat pastures and uh, you'll see that in a later video. But with that, we want to just say thank you to all of you. Uh, we recently hit a milestone on Barely Homesteading this week. We have over 100 subscribers. So thank you to everyone who supports us and watches our videos. We hope you enjoy it, and we hope you uh, stay with us this year and see what we're able to accomplish. So with that, uh, this is Lumberjack and Mama Bear and Baby Bear from Barely Homesteading saying use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. Bye.